Senator Inhofe. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have uh, three questions, two, two short ones. The other one may require going on the record. Uh, Director Clapper, I, I know what your answer is after hearing your opening statement, but when you said, looking back over my now more than half century of intelligence, uh, I've not experienced a time when you've been beset by more crisis and threats around the globe, and you still stand by that. And, correct. Yes, sir, and uh, if I'm here next year, I'll probably say it again. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. You've been very straightforward and honest about these things. General Stewart, you stated and this was, that we face a more diverse and complex uh, problem than we have experienced in our lifetimes. Still stand by that? Absolutely, Senator. Yes. Well, now, there's an assumption when we're out in the public, out talking to real people and away from Washington, that we who are on this committee uh, know a lot of answers we don't know. And one of them that should be a very easy answer, and, and I want to get something from you guys that I can stand on. When we talk about the power in terms of the strength, the number of bodies in this in ISIL or ISIS, in September of 14, we talked about the, it's been an additional some 20,000 since this all started. I think we all agree on that. But they said it was somewhere between 20 and 31, five. Uh, fighters that were in Iraq and Syria. Now we know since that time it's gone beyond uh, that. Then in uh, August they talked about from 80 to 100,000. Uh, then in November one of the Kurdish leaders uh, stated that the IS ISIL's military had increased to 200,000 fighters. Can you kind of give us an idea? And uh, number one, why it's so difficult to do? And number two, something that we can use and quote you to as the sources. Um, it's, uh, from my vantage, it's unfortunate uh, these numbers get out. Um, for one, we don't, don't have what I would call Census Bureau door-to-door -door survey accuracy uh, or fidelity over these numbers. Uh, they're very hard to come by. We have to derive them inferen inferentially from a number of different sources. Ergo, even when we do come out with numbers, you'll have a wide range. Um, so the current uh, estimate is, uh, we're standing on here is somewhere in the range between 20 and 32,000 fighters. Now the difficulty here is assessing who's a core fighter who does this full time, who may be a facilitator, a supporter, and do it part time, and all that sort of thing. I will say that the this is one uh, uh, effect of the airstrikes has been substantial um, attrition. They lost at least 3,000 fighters in Kobani for whatever reason they wanted to do that. And as well, what that's driving them to now, we're seeing evidence oh. of, constri of conscri conscription. So the estimate we're going with okay. right now, that's, but this that's, very that's dynamic, fine. is 20 to 32,000. Yeah, we're, gosh, I, I, well, anyway. Um, it may take a while to, to get into this, but I am uh, I'm very much concerned. I was over in the Ukraine when they had their elections, and that's when they had the elections, and it was Yatsitsyuk uh, as, as much as Poroshenko. They were just elated, both of them from different political parties, but the political parties are very pro-Western, and they're rejoicing in the fact that for the first time in 96 years, the communists don't have one seat in parliament. To me, I thought when that happened, there's not going to be any problem with us going in with weapons, and, 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 and obviously uh, the Democrats and Republicans up here agreed with that. We have language in our, in our last defense authorization bill that we had $75 million where we were encouraging the President to use through the European Reassurance uh, Initiative uh, for, for uh, weapons uh, uh, going into um, uh, to be of assist to uh, our best friend in that area. Now. I, I can't figure out why we don't do it. Um, uh, let me just ask the two of you, would you recommend it? Sir, I, I think uh, I have to answer uh, <clears throat> two ways here. One, uh, institutionally, this is a policy yep. issue, yep. and the yeah, intelligence no, community doesn't... Make sure, I'm not talking about sending troops, I'm talking about sending lethal weapons. I understand, I understand right. what you're asking, and that's what I'm answering. Uh, I think so, f from an intelligence community perspective, that is a policy issue. We're down in the engine room shoveling intelligence coal and the people up on the bridge, to use the Navy metaphor, uh, drive the ship and rearrange the deck chairs. I have a personal view, uh, and it is only that, All right. that I would favor it. But that's a personal perspective, that's and it does not I, I represent an official your... company policy of the intelligence community. 
I appreciate that very much. And uh, General Stewart. Sir, I'm trying to stay out of the personal. Well, I know you're trying to stay out, but uh, uh, it's so, time so that we, we've got to get this done. We, we stand by the assessment that uh, lethal aid couldn't be delivered quickly enough or change the military balance of power on the ground. So you're for lethal uh, weapons? It, it would not change the military balance of power, and it couldn't get there quickly enough to make a difference, and that Russia will up the ante. As a military guy, do you buy this argument that we might be provoking negative reaction from Putin? You know, I, I listen to, uh, I see what, our, what the President is doing every once in a while, and, and they talk about, well, we don't want to make the, the, uh, the terrorists mad at us. They might hurt us. You know, so what's your opinion about this uh, statement on provoking a negative reaction from Putin? I think as important as uh, Moscow placed on Ukraine, to keep it in there near abroad, to keep it out of the EU, to keep it out of NATO, I think they will up the ante if we do any lethal aid or take any actions to bolster the Ukrainian. <coughs> Whether that provokes uh, the President or not, uh, it, it's hard for me to say. The, the realities are they see this as central to their foreign policy. Mm -hmm. They see it as critical that they keep Ukraine out of NATO to keep it out of the Western sphere yeah, of influence and uh, exert influence, and uh, they'll react accordingly, I suspect. Thank you, General. 